So in this video, we're going to be learning about hardware and trims and how to apply them in Clo. We're going to start with zippers. So let's open the first project file, which is one, zippers. So there are a couple of different ways of making zippers in Clo. The first way we're going to learn is using the zipper tool. And that's a more automated way of making a zipper. It works the best for center front zippers and full length zippers. First, we're going to delete our sewing line at our center front seam. So just use your edit sewing tool, select those sewing lines and hit delete on your keyboard. Simulate so that your garment kind of spreads a bit so you have space to add the zipper. Then you're going to use your zipper tool in the 3D window. You're going to click to start on the left side at the top and then double click at the bottom on the left side. Click again on the right side and then double click at the bottom. You always want to go left to right in order to make sure that your zipper is facing to the front. Then turn simulation on and a zipper should be added to your center front seam. If you turn simulation off, you can then click on the zipper with your select move tool and then move it anywhere you want along the zipper. So you'll see that little shadow. And then when you turn simulation on again, your zipper will have unfastened. And so you can kind of decide where you want your zipper to lie. In the property editor, when you click on your zipper head, you'll find different options, um, shapes for sliders, pullers, um, sizing. You can change the material and the weight and the color. So you can play with this and kind of match your references or make up a zipper that you want to use for your garment. If you click on the zipper teeth, you'll be able to change its texture. The zipper teeth is just a 2D piece. So you're going to use textures and images in order to um, create that visual. And you can also change the color of your zipper teeth. So I'm going to do a matching zipper teeth and then just kind of play around with a different zipper color. So that's basically it for zippers. You can move your zipper slider and puller around as much as you want, and you can kind of play with the different options. Next, we're gonna learn how to create a zipper um, using an OBJ trim. So this is for when you have a very custom zipper. The closed zipper tool is kind of limited to what's available in our library. But if you have an OBJ or if you have a 3D model and you want to use it um, as a zipper, you can definitely do that. And this applies not only to zippers, but to any kind of trims that you want to stick on your garment. So first, I'm going to trace out this little pattern. You need to create a zipper teeth pattern so I'm going to use my trace tool to trace out this one. And then I'm going to apply, oh, first I'm going to sew. And right clicking to superimpose sides so that it sticks to my garment. I'm going to simulate to update my changes. So I need a zipper teeth fabric in order to create the zipper teeth. I'm just gonna add a new fabric. And then in the folder, there are a couple of different textures you can choose from. So just pick whichever one, or you can use your own. After you add it, make sure to apply it to that pattern piece, and then you can use the edit texture tool to align it and resize it. So all this material editing uh, can be found in our materials videos. So I'm just gonna like brush through it here. So that is our zipper teeth. So now you have a custom zipper head that you want to add. In uh, We can use one from the Clo library, but in the uh, hardware and trims folders, you'll see zippers, pullers, and sliders. You have to add them individually, but you, then you can mix and match. So pick the uh, slider you want to use, and you have to use the OBJ. Right click and add to workspace. Make sure you choose OBA trim. 
or import as trim. Then hit OK. You don't have to change anything else unless it's your own custom OBJ and then you have specific settings that you set up. Then when you click on that little OBJ trim, you'll see there's a little glue bottle um, that's attached to the gizmo. Click on that little glue and then you'll be able to click anywhere in your garment and your trim will attach to that. After it's uh, superimposed onto your garment, you can click on it again and use the gizmo to kind of adjust it, but you don't have to um, do as much work as like pulling it up using the gizmo or anything. And then I'm gonna add my um, zipper pull. So add whatever pull you want, and then again, you're gonna use that little glue bottle, click on the glue bottle first, and then click where on the garment you want it to stick. When you add OBJs as trim, you can also scale them. So if I click on the OBJ, you'll see that little um, square gizmo. You can click on that little icon and then you'll change your gizmo to be a scaling one. So you can use those handles to increase or decrease the size and dimension of your OBJ. And like before, um, with OBJs, you can change the color, materials, textures as you want. So that's your custom zipper. Another way you can use OBJs is if you have an invisible zipper. Um, I find this really useful because you don't actually need it to be functioning. You can just stick it onto wherever you would want to put an invisible zipper. Um, like in real life when you just kind of see that zipper pull but you don't actually see the zipper teeth or anything. So it's kind of like a small detail, but it's helpful if you need to call something out. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is buttons. And I have this button down shirt. First, I'm going to sew the placket to the other side of the shirt, just to straighten everything out. You kind of want to start when you're buttoning things to have like a pretty straight placket um, or section that you're gonna button. You want the buttonholes and the buttons to align before you actually fasten them. So I'm gonna sew this down with my sewing tool and then I'm gonna simulate to update my changes. Great. So now I want to add a button to the bottom of the placket. So just like in real life, whatever placket is on the bottom is going to be where the buttons live. I'm going to go to my button panel in my object browser and then add a new button. Then I'm going to use the button tool to add that button to my project. And I just click anywhere I want to place a button. If it's not aligned, you can use your select button tool to grab that pat button and move it around. So once I have one button, I want to copy it all along the placket. But first, now I can see uh, what it looks like and I can edit the materials, the color, the size, etc. If I click on the button in the auto browser, I see a bunch of different options. You can grab a shape that you like. We have a bunch of presets. And then you can enter in line size or inches. The settings presets will be in your uh, user settings. And I'm going to make my button metal, but you can kind of do whatever button you want for this shirt. Then I'm going to use my select button tool and right click copy and right click paste this button on the placket. If I hold down shift and then right click, I can open up this uh, direct placement box and it will let me choose the interval and how many buttons I want to place at once. So it's a quick way of uh, making a placket and making sure everything is aligned. I'm going to select all my buttons now and then right click. You have an option to uh, duplicate as buttonhole on duplicate pattern. So this means that your symmetric placket will automatically place the buttonhole there. And if you can see the angle is wrong, I want it to be vertical. So with all my buttonholes selected, I can just change the angle to 90. Then in the object browser, I can select the buttonhole I'm using. Right now it's the default buttonhole. You can tell because the text is blue and highlighted. 
I can change the name by double clicking and then I can change the shape. We don't have as many shapes or textures to use, but we have the basics. So you can kind of play with that and change the size and shapes and colors as you go. Cool. So now that I have my button and my buttonholes, I'm gonna fasten my buttons. To fasten them, you're gonna use the fasten button tool and you're gonna click on the button and then the buttonhole you wanna match it to. You can also select multiple buttons and then match them to multiple buttonholes. Just drag a selection box over the buttons that you want to choose. And then I'm gonna turn simulation on. If you did everything correctly, then you have a placket. You can also unfasten buttons. Um, you don't have to have them all fastened all the time. I'm gonna unsew the placket to itself so that it drapes more naturally. And if you want, you can select your placket and turn on bonding in the property editor. This just means you're adding some interfacing to the placket like you would in real life, and it kind of helps stabilize it. But otherwise, you're done. Next, let's talk about buckles and other trims that interact with the garment. So you're not placing the garment on it, you're gonna add a buckle. Go to your folder and then right click on buckle OBJ and hit add to workspace. When the settings pop up, you're actually gonna click load as avatar. So the difference between loading as an avatar and loading as a trim is that when you load a OBJ as an avatar, it continues to be uh, a hard object, it will interact with garments and other things in the 3D space, whereas a trim is just kind of like a sticker. Um, and you stick it on top of things and it doesn't really have collision. For this OBJ, we're gonna use centimeters as our scale, and that's just based on the settings that was used when this OBJ was exported from the original 3D modeling software. So for yours, it's based on um, whatever you're using if you're using a custom OBJ. So once the OBJ is in, just use the gizmo that pops up to move your OBJ to be in front of the buck of the belt. So you want it to be close because you're gonna loop the belt through the buckle. And then I'll show you once you get it right in front of the, of the belt. If you lose the gizmo, just double click on the OBJ and it'll come back. I'm going to hide my library. Okay, so now that it is in a good place, let's use our select mesh tool to grab the belt. And if you notice, when you grab in the 3D window, you actually grab not only the belt, but the pants. You don't really want that. So I'm gonna select it again in the 2D window now that I kind of know where I have to select. Then you're gonna double click on that area you just selected and use the gizmo to pull that section of the belt forward. Turn on simulation and it should settle inside the buckle. If it gets all like crinkly and um, a bit like wiggly, that's because every object and pattern piece in Clo has this buffer around it. For an avatar, that kind of the buffer is called skin offset. So if you click on the buckle in the property editor, you'll see skin offset. It's normally at three millimeters. So just turn it down from uh, one to 0.5 and then re-simulate and the belt should settle. All avatars have this offset. It just helps when um, you're building things so that your patterns don't fall inside or collide with the avatar. But you can control this to make sure things set nicely and aren't um, wriggly. So once your buckle is all set, you can click on it again. And then in the property editor, you can change the color and texture of any avatar. I'm just gonna change my material to be metal and then adjust the color. And you can play with yours um, as you want. Okay, so in this last part of the video, I'm going to go and do a quick overview of the binding tool. The binding tool 
creates a binding similar to if you're going to finish a t-shirt collar or a woven shirt collar. You can also do like a Hong Kong binding or um, like a hem detail. It, you can kind of play with it and go with whatever um, you're interested in. But to use it, you're going to look into your 3D toolbar. If you, you might have to expand it if your screen is small. Um, at the end, there is the binding tool and then the edit binding tool. Click on the binding tool and then you can, so you can only bind um, hems or edges. So we're going to click on the armhole and I like to start at the underarm and go all the way around. You can click all around that outline in the 3D window to anchor yourself, but at the end you have to go to where you started. So once you uh, clicked back to the beginning, the outline should be highlighted and a binding should be created. I went ahead and did the armholes and the neckline, so you can do that as well. Make sure to simulate to update your changes. So the binding will um, stabilize and shorten or shrink the uh, necklines and armholes a bit, just like in real life. Your, there's going to be more tension where those things are sewn on. Now that you have binding, we can edit the binding with the edit binding tool. If you click on that tool and then select one of the bindings you just created, in the property editor you'll see a couple of options pop up. You can change things like if you want the binding to be over on the outside of the garment or under, meaning inside the garment. You can also change the width of it. So if you want a thicker binding, you can edit that. So at my neckline, I'm adding a, a half inch binding versus a quarter inch binding. You can also change the shrinkage, so how um, long it is, and you can change the fabric that you're using. So if you want a different colored binding, you need to have a different colored fabric. On this project file, uh, I already have a bunch of different fabrics you need to choose from, but if you wanted something else, you would have to create it yourself or add a new fabric. So back to length and shrinkage. So you can adjust the length of your top stitch in the property editor as well. If you're trying to match a specific spec or shrinkage level, you can definitely adjust it here. This would be useful for trims like um, an elastic binding or if you're using a specific bias. And speaking of bias, you can adjust the grain line. There's bias, weft, and then you can change the grain line based on what you're actually using. You can also change um, or add a top stitch to the binding. So at the bottom of the list there's top stitch, segment A and segment B. You can choose to have either or, um, or none. And if you click on to the top stitches, it lets you select which top stitch you're using. So that's corresponding to the top stitch toolbar in the object browser. So you have to have top stitches created. If you don't, we're going to go to top stitch right now and choose default top stitch. You can edit the color, the size. I'm going to make mine big and uh, contrasting color just so you can see it. And you can choose to have the top stitch over or under. I'm just going to change my binding to be on the outside of the garment so you can see what the top stitch looks like. And if your top stitch is looking a little blocky, just make sure to simulate and it'll update itself. So that's basically it for the binding tool. Um, once again, it's just something you can play with and kind of experiment to get the look that you want and the design that you want.